What's happening, y'all? This is the Barber Mosaic. I am Maurice. And today, I just want to talk a little bit about state of the country, what's going on right now in terms of race relations, you know, the Antifa thing and the riots and the race war that everybody is so scared about. I just want to touch on a few things, man, about that and where I think the root, the root cause of all of the civil unrest. As you all know, George Floyd was killed by four Minneapolis police police officers. Um, the one, the guy was on his knee on the neck and we understand that story. First of all, I'm gonna say, I haven't even watched the video. I've seen some pictures, but I haven't even watched the video and I don't plan on watching the video. I already, you see a, you know, African-American gentleman you know, gets killed by the Caucasian police officer. That happens so much. You've seen it once, you've seen it a thousand times. Like, I, I don't even care to see the video. But I understand that what happened was a murder. From what I, from people that I trust that have seen the video, I've talked to them, they're telling me the guy was murdered, okay? And I definitely believe that wholeheartedly. It is what it is, right? There's a lot, there's been a lot of getting into it and talking to people in terms of, you know, social media where somebody can post something and say what they, what they, what they feel and, and talk about their thoughts on the situation. And, you know, we have, we have, have our own dialogue on social media, you know, and, and rarely does anybody get their complete point across, right? I'm going to talk a little bit about why I think things are the way they are. Okay. And I'm going to talk about what we all can do to change the way things are, okay? Now, we ain't gotta talk about slavery. We don't gotta talk about all of that other shit. We don't gotta talk about that, all right? Because I, I represent the new school of African-Americans that are so far removed from the African and the African-American that we have, you know, pretty much, uh, we are trying to assimilate into American culture, whether we want to or not. We are assimilating into American culture. And I'm fine with that. I'm perfect with that. I feel like enough blood was shed from my ancestry here on this land that I don't have to go anywhere else. I feel like I this is my rightful place in the world is in the United States of America. I'm an 80s baby. I grew up. I was born in 78. I grew up in the 80s. That was a great time, um, in my opinion, for for for. Uh, African-Americans to see the change because coming from the 60s where it was a lot worse for us to the 70s and the 80s like like I was able to see things get better and now it seems like they're getting worse and I couldn't figure out why are it seems like we're going backwards why are we going back in time why is it getting worse is it because of the cameras is it because like why is thing, are things getting worse and I'm gonna tell you this as a, as a child, right? One of the first things you learn are colors. You learn colors. You learn primary colors, yellow, blue, red. You mix those shits up. Yellow and blue make green. Red and blue make purple. Like you, you, you get to all, you, you understand all this shit. Like you, you understand colors. When it comes to black and white colors, you learn quickly what black is. You learn what white is. You learn that black is kind of undesirable. Yeah, black isn't a great color. But certain things about about black are are not cool. Like you you learn that black is the black cats, black magic. You learn all these black mailing someone. Like you learn all of these negative connotations that come from just the term black. But you also learn that you're black around the same time, even though you're brown and you look at yourself and you're like, yo, how the fuck am I? How am I black? I'm brown. Like my skin is brown. I'm not black. Like there's I've never seen a black person in my life. We're brown. But when you have other brown people, your people calling themselves and you black, then you have other people that don't look like you calling you black. You at some point your spirit is beat down to the point to where you accept the fact, yo, I'm black. You accept that you accept it as a fact that I'm black. And you also accept that black is the opposite of white. 
That's what it says in the dictionary. Black is the opposite of white. Black is devoid of light. Black cannot reflect light. Black is so soiled and unclean. Like that's what you learn about the color black. And 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 how how are you able in your mind to differentiate the color from what people are calling you? So before you know it, you've developed this disdain for yourself and for people that look like you. On the other hand, some people are learning that they're white. The same time they're learning that the color white is pure. I have a little white t-shirt. It's great. I, I want white teeth. We, we brush our teeth to get white teeth. Um, cool white sheets are perfect at the end of the night after a long day of work and you get in your cool white sheets. That fit, that's great. Um, how do you know something is absolutely clean? Like, How would you know for a fact that something is absolutely clean and without any spots or wrinkles? It will be stone cold white. When snow falls to the ground, it leaves this beautiful white you know what I'm saying? So you're learning all these great white things and you're also learning that those people are white and you're a child. So you can't differentiate the color from the person. OK, so. All these years of being black, living black. Without even being black, with being brown, but living black, being black, having an attitude, a black attitude, a black uh, thought process. No wonder we are in the situation that we are in as African-Americans. It's because we believe we are black. That's the first thing that we have to shake off. We have to shake off the black thing. We got to shake that off. We're not black. Nobody is black. Nobody And nobody is white. Nobody is white. Nobody is pure, virginal, innocent, um, of or, re or reflecting light only. Nobody is that. Nobody is that. There's no such thing as white people. There's no such thing as black people. If we get technical about everything, I'm brown. And if we go look up what brown means, what the color brown means and what it represents, I challenge you all to do that yourself. If we look up what brown means and we look up what brown represents, then it'll give you a different look at who you are and what the tone of your skin represents. Okay? So... Now, the question is, what do you do with it? And I can tell you, I've been very blessed in my life to be around some really great Caucasian people. Shout out to Grant G Money, Grant Carringer. Shout out to Rich Berman. Shout out to uh, Reynolds Williams. Shout out to uh, so many people. Matthew Van Ort. Um, God, this is the list of great Caucasian people that I've been around is so fucking long, right? And I can tell you what those people did for me, man, because as an African American, there's, there's going to come a point in your lifetime as an African American when you realize life is a race. It's a rat race. It is. American life is a rat race. And there's a, then, you, then you're going to realize that you're behind in the race. Just because you, are, you have brown skin, you are behind. You're behind. You're not dumber, you're not uh, shorter, you're not uglier, you're not, no, you ain't nothing bad. You're just behind in the race. You're behind. And then you have to decide, what am I going to do? Am I going to sit back and try to make some excuse, make some extent? First, try to make some sense of why you're behind. Well, I'm behind because blah, blah, blah. then the race is still being ran. So now you're, now you're making excuses. For why you're behind. I'm, be I'm behind because the white people are blah, 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 and this is white and everybody's white and I'm black and, blah, blah, and you're making excuses for why you're behind, right? So while you're doing that, you continue to lose ground. You're continuing to lose the race, okay? And I was very fortunate because I've had all of these positive interactions with Caucasian people that they were flawed, of course, because they thought they were white. And they've accepted the, they, they've accepted that as fact that they are white and that I was. But something that they did do was they shared with me, they shared with me things that had been shared with them, and they put in a position mentally where I could receive, I could thrive off of the information that they gave me. Like, and it's very simple, very simple shit too. Like, I want you to picture in your mind, like, 
people running a race and then I'm sitting by saying, bro, I can't win this race. I can't win this race. And they, you know, kind of stop and get to a light jog and like, yo, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I'm like, bro, I can't, I can't run this race because I'm black and you're white and you're going to win. They're like, nah, come on, come on, you can, you can go catch up, come on, catch up, catch up. So they're running and they're asking me to run too. And they're encouraging me to run. And they're saying, yo, Maurice, you are smart. You are, you're a great guy. You're cool. Everybody likes you like run harder because you can be successful. Um, why are you working that job? Why are you stuck on that? bullshit job at mcdonald's you're smart you have a way with words why don't you be a server because i was a server in college and I, i've been a server and people give you money just to talk to them and and make them like you and then you don't have to work hard on the job you can go to school and be a server and make money like this is something that I, I blew my mind i, I was like so so because i always worked in the back of the restaurant i always worked in the back of the house dragging trash and bullshit they were like yo bro you're better than that like you can actually work in the front of the house. You speak to people, you make make the people like you and you talk to them, you speak well, and then they will give you money. They will tip you as long as you give them great service, they will love you. And then, and honestly, they will really love you because you work in a fine dining restaurant where they don't have too many of these type of interactions with, with, um, with Brown, with African-Americans. And you kind of show them that, bro, I, like we are not what you think we are and they will love you even more. And that's kind of what happened. And um, believe in your, Maurice, believe in yourself. You you should believe in yourself because you are dope. You're awesome. And we're going to let you catch up. Like we're not going to stop running. We're not going to stop running. We're not going to make no excuse for you. I'm not going to give you my spot in the, in the race. I'm not going to make any excuses for you, but I'm going to encourage you to run harder, run harder because you can catch up to us. And that's what those guys has have done for me over the years. And th it may sound stupid or it may sound crazy to you, but now that I'm running myself, I'm doing that same thing for other African-American young brothers that find themselves in a trap, stuck with that black cloud over their head because they've accepted a fact of them being black and other people being white and inherently being worse people than the people that they view as white, okay? Now, to change this, white people, people that believe you're white, you must accept the fact you're not white. Nobody is white. Nobody is black. Nobody is white. Nobody is black. We are not black. You are not white. You are not perfect and unsoiled and un and 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 without spot or wrinkle. You are not white. There is no such thing as a white person. And in my opinion, whenever you call yourself white, you are adding one more brick at a time to racism and injustice. Because as long as people feel that I am black and they are white, that gives them the right to kill me without any consequences. What's up, baby? I'm, I'm doing... I'm doing a video. I'm doing a video. Come here. Like, this is my daughter. Come here. This is my daughter. Carson. Carson. Hmm? What color are you? Brown. Brown. Are you black? Yeah. No. Nobody is black. Nobody is black. You are a bright, you are a beautiful, bright light wrapped up. <clears throat> excuse me. Wrapped in beautiful brown skin. You are not black. Do not ever let anyone tell you you are a black person. You are not. Okay. You are an American of African descent, which makes you a beautiful brown princess. Okay? Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay, okay. And that's the way we fight this thing, with the truth. That's how we fight it. Nobody is black, nobody is white. I am not black. I have brown skin. I am an American of African descent. I'm very proud of my African heritage. I feel very great about being, being descendants from, from, from those people, but I'm in America now. And I'm making my home and my family in America. And I will continue to thrive because that's what I wanna do. I don't want to get held back. I don't want to make no excuses. 
I don't want no party. I don't no pity party. I don't want no handout. I don't want no reparations. I don't want nobody to give me nothing. The only thing I want is to be able to go out and work and provide for my family without being shot and killed in the street by a police officer. That is all I want. I don't want nothing for free. Don't give me nothing. I will go out and I will work for it. I don't even mind, bro. I don't even get down about certain parts of racism. Like if, oh, oh, um, oh, Mr. Mr. Maurice, um, you can't get this job because you're black. All right, fuck it. Keep your job. I'll go make a job. I'll go make a job. Oh, Maurice, you can't get this loan because you're black. All right, fuck it. Fuck your loan. I'll stack the money, save it up, and I'll go get what the fuck I want on my own. Like, that's the attitude that we have to have as African-Americans. We cannot sit back and make excuses for why we are where we are. We cannot just give up and not run the race. We can't. We have to run. We have to run. And we also have to find Caucasian people that don't mind cheering us on as we run. If we, if you find, if you find some good Caucasian folks that notice something in you, like, yo, this is a good fucking dude. Come on, man, let's go, let's go, let's get it, let's get some success. You have to be receptive to that. You have to, as an African American, you have to be receptive to that. And if if you're a Caucasian person and you see with your own eyes. A, a brown person, if you see an African American person struggling in the right direction and trying, it will be really dope of you to give that person an opportunity to show how dope they are. Not to just judge them by whatever you may think or whatever you may have saw, seen, excuse me, seen on TV, whatever you may have seen on First 48, whatever you may have seen on Love and Hip Hop, because that's not who we all are. We're, we're not a monolith, man. We're not a monolith. And a lot of times, all all we need is to see more than what we've seen, and that's what those that that group of of my Caucasian friends that's what they've done. They've helped me to see a little bit more than what I was used to seeing, and that completely changed my life. Completely changed my life. So, shout out to everybody out there that's going through it, man. I love you. I have a lot of love for for so many of you, and I just hope that we can all get through this thing together, man, and make make a better America, make a greater America and, and, and stick together, man. That's, that's, that's my hope. And that's my prayer and I'm out.